Hi all. My name's Tom. Some of you already know me, but for those who don't, I will tell you about our tale regarding the bank, the courts, and the bailiffs. Our story starts some time ago in 1988, when we took out an endowment mortgage with Bradford and Bingley Building Society, as it was known then. We continued paying happily for the next 12 years, approximately. Well, we didn't pay happily. We paid, as everyone does. Until my wife was informed that we would never pay off our mortgage. And she was quite shocked at this news and contacted me and we contacted the bank manager. Who said, there is no documentation for this, he can't understand it. They had actually converted our endowment into a part and part, part interest, part capital. He sent my wife, oh, it was a lovely bunch of flowers and a bottle of champagne. We were really pleased. That champagne and flowers turned out to be the most expensive flowers and champagne my family's ever had. We continued paying in the belief that they converted our endowment, our part and part, back to an endowment. Until some time later we discovered that they'd not only converted the endowment into a part and part, but they'd converted the part and part into an interest only. So we complain to the ombudsman, or ombudsperson if you're politically correct. Well, 2011 I contracted, or was diagnosed, with um, cancer and under, underwent numerous operations to sort out the mistakes that the surgeon made, not the cancer. And while lying in my sick bed, Bradford and Bingley attempted to possess our home as all evil entities do they possess things and I was required to attend court in 2012 we had all the documentation to, to prove that fraud had taken place even if it's not fraud it's negligence so we attended court and a young lady, District Judge Murray Smith, presiding, adjourned the case for the possession of my home because she couldn't proceed while the ombudsman was looking into the case. 2012 Or six months later, I should say, we attended court and we'd been informed previously that the ombudsman couldn't do anything, they tell me, because my complaint was time barred. It was more than six years. But I know there is no time limit to fraud. So we attended court. And at that hearing, presiding, District Judge Holt. He couldn't do anything to us, because there was no arrears. The only thing there was, wasn't, was an endowment. And he wasn't concerned. He didn't want to hear that. And under great pressure from Bradford, Bradford and Bingley's barrister to try and possess her home, 
he had no option but to say, stay the proceedings. Well, no, he finished the proceedings, but he kept the order standing for possession of my home. Then, in 2013, we came to the end of our mortgage. 20, 25 years. We didn't know anything. We had proof of fraud. So we decided to have a preemptive strike because we knew what they were trying to do. So we took them to court to get their charge of our deeds. As we proceeded, Bradford and Bingley solicitors wanted a hearing to see if my case or claim had merit. And before District Judge Richard McMillan, remember that name, it was heard. And of course, my claim didn't have any merit. I felt really bad then. What was I thinking about? I'd put this judge to such trouble. And the barrister who came all the way up from London for three and a half thousand pounds. Oh dear, I should have just given them the keys. Well, once that was done, they put a letter in the post to us. They had started the proceedings again from the original possession claim. And we'd already established with Bradford and Bingley that there was no arrears. Just the endowment. But they managed to magically appear £1,350 in arrears to start that claim off again. Ten days ago, we received through the post a warrant for possession on the 23rd of July. He couldn't make a stay on the warrant for possession as there never was, was one presented in evidence. There was never a warrant in Tom's case presented as evidence. We've been asking for the warrant since day one. There's a, a, a notice of eviction which is what he's basing it on, but that's, not the warrant. That's, the, that's what it's executed. That's exactly right, yeah. That's, that's, that's what it is. If there's, there is no warrant in this matter. If there is a warrant, show us it. That's what we've been asking. And, uh, but we know that there isn't, and we know that there's never even been a case through the courts themselves. Ten days ago, we received through the post a warrant possession on the 23rd of July at nine in the morning. That was very upsetting for my wife. Well I wasn't too pleased either and I wasn't even, uh, I was worse pleased if there's such a thing when this turned up at my door. You may recognize him, featured in many evictions David Caress, an obnoxious, egotistical person. He's not a man. And they say that you can tell a man's soul through his eyes. This man, he's not wearing glasses. You're looking straight into his soul. That evil person takes homes from old people, from sick people. The surgeons have put me on a certain drug and I have to be on it from time to time. This drug, this is my patient's card. Uh, it's Latin so forgive the pronunciation. It's ex -rally.
We talked to our doctors about treatment with Xeralta. Me? But I had a blood clot on my leg that could have traveled to my lungs. That's why I took Xeralto, too. Xeralto is proven to treat and help reduce the risk of DVT and PE blood clots. I took Xeralto for AFib, an irregular heartbeat that can lead to a stroke from a blood clot. 